Yeah, so we're here today with uh, Mark Stolzenberg, who has been involved in the television and, and movie industry for most of his life. And uh, Mark, we'd like to have you start by talking about how you got into, into the whole business of the business. Yes. Well, let me say I've been blessed in that I've made a living as an actor in show business my entire life, which is a miracle right there. Uh, I mean, I'm not Tom Cruise, but I, I have made a living um, as a performer without having to wait on tables or drive a taxi or anything like that. So uh, I'm very proud of that. And I've enjoyed the run. I mean, I followed my passion. Um, I actually had a graduate fellowship to New York University in education. And I dropped out to because I was accepted to clown college. So my parents were very happy about this. I gave up my fellowship at New York University to go to clown college. <laughs> mm. So, but uh, clown college turned out to be an incredibly rewarding experience. And they picked like a, a few of the uh, students in the clown college to actually and awarded them contracts in the circus. I was one of them. That was it. It got me hooked as a performer for the rest of my life. So um, I, I was in the circus for a year and I learned a tremendous, just a tremendous amount of things about myself as an artist. Then I ran away from the circus and I joined New York City. So, uh, and, uh, and just at a ripe young age, I just started developing all my own material. I had a little circus show that I did, which I could make money off of. And then I was able to write little plays and produce off Broadway shows and uh, participate in all kinds of improv groups. And I studied mime. I ended up writing books about mime and clowning. And uh, at some point in there, I did stand up comedy as well, and uh, which I loved. And at some point um, in there, I auditioned for a feature, big fe a feature film. And they saw 2000 people for the part and I got the part. Now, that was a turning point in my life. And I decided when I did that movie, I just loved it. Uh, I love the whole process of being in a movie, well, especially being the star of the movie. And, and the gentleman who directed it and cast and wrote it went on to write and produce Growing Pains for CBS, one of the biggest all-time sitcoms ever. So he, uh, um, so I'm very, it was a great experience, but it got me hooked to film and television acting. And uh, because I was a star of the movie, I was on the set working 12 hours a day, every single day for six weeks. And I learned a tremendous amount. And from there, I started doing more and more TV and film work and less theater and decided to make film and television my focus for my future. And uh, that's what I've been doing ever since. And it's been, a, it's just been great. And uh, it started get, I was, I did like 40 SAG television commercials, a, a dozen films and some television series. And it's been great. And I started teaching for the new school university and then um, at some point I created my own school and here I am, uh, the New York Acting School for Film and Television. I love it. Yeah, so um, I know that uh, the school was doing really, really well over the years and then all of a sudden COVID, you know, which, mm -hmm. is, which has become a line that we'll never get away from and then COVID. <laughs> mm. but. Uh, COVID came along, and I think uh, at that point you were kind of worried about what you were going to do because you were teaching in studio. And mm. but uh, you had a uh, you had a revelation. Yeah, well, yeah, worried is uh, to put it mildly. I was like having a heart attack. <laughs> I mean, not literally, but I mean, I just I was I had a I had a thriving studio class four nights a week. And uh, I was making, you know, most of my living off of that at that point. And then everything shut down, just gone, had to close everything. And I then discovered Zoom and said, well, this is what I'm going to have to do. Necessity is the mother of invention, right? So I, I, I figured out how to operate a Zoom class at, because I had to, <laughs> not because I wanted to. 
and I started teaching on it and, uh, and then I started realizing, hey, this is really works. This is great. This is good. And I'll tell you, after two years of doing this, I feel that the Zoom classes are better than teaching live. They're just remarkable as an instructional tool. Uh, the students are more focused because they don't have to travel to get to some studio somewhere, get, you know, travel on a subway and walk in the street. You know, they can do it at home at your convenience and focus. So their focus and attention is much, uh, much more clear. And, uh, and I find that what I have to teach, which is film for film acting, this would not work for theater or tap dancing or ballet, <laughs> <laughs> but for film acting, it's a perfect uh, medium because you're on a close up, just like we are right now. I'm on a close up and that's your money shot in a movie. Everybody wants to do great close ups. When you audition, you're doing a close up. When you do a close-up in a movie, that's how you get famous. So that's the most important thing we have to learn as actors in film is to do great close-ups. And Zoom is just perfect for that. And uh, it's it frames you just like a, a real close-up in the movie. Um, we can also learn how to manage our space and fine tune the physicality of what we're doing. So if I move a half inch forward, how does that look? If I move a half inch back, what is that? All that stuff that you need to do when you're shooting a movie, you can practice on Zoom and it just is perfect. What happens if I turn my head this way? What does that look like? Uh, you know, and uh, things like that. Um, so eye line, physicality, uh, projection, the way I use my voice, all those things work great on Zoom. And it's exactly the kind of stuff you need if you want to be a movie star, the kind of training you need. Um, also, um, on top of it, the whole industry has gone virtual. So if you have an audition now for a TV show or a movie, you're not going to a studio anywhere. You're going to do it on Zoom or you're going to use your cell phone and self tape yourself and email it in like a Zoom audition. So the training that you get in my class is exactly what you need to work professionally in the business right now. And you have to develop a comfort zone with auditioning on your cell phone, basically. That's what everybody's doing, the whole world. And it's the standard right now. So and, do, you um, help, do you help your students with their audition uh, mm, uh, effort with, you know, actually putting that together? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, if a student has an audition, I give them an open invitation to do it in class and practice their audition in in my Zoom class. And then, you know, so that they're more prepared when they actually do their self tape and submit it. Um, some students actually make separate appointments with me to coach them on their audition separately from class, like a private lesson, just to coach them on their audition. And it's easy because we just log in on Zoom. I don't have to go to a studio or a school or anywhere else do it right from home after I have my lunch, you know? Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, I recently had an agent showcase um, where I presented, which is common in the industry. You Not common, but a lot of schools will present their students doing monologues and, and invite an agent to come see it. And, you know, agents rare, rarely will book or sign up any of the students. Well, I just had about 10 students in one of my showcases and the agent that I had there booked, signed up three of my students that were three out of 10, three out of 10. So it just, I mean, it's just not more evidence that the training they're getting with me in that medium is, is awesome. It really works. Really now, works. did you, now was your meeting uh, in studio to do that or was that no. on Zoom? That was everything, <laughs> the whole thing was on Zoom, everything. Nice. So, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. really that's really amazing. So, what would mm -hmm. you say besides the fact that you're actually physically on the camera uh, during the entire experience? What other disadvantages or disadvantages come along with uh, teaching on Zoom? Uh, well, another advantage is that you very uh, easily get a recording of your performance. So I record my whole class in the Zoom meeting and then we send it out to my students. Here's a record 
of what you did in class. So you have a record of not only your performance, but my critique of your performance and and all the other students you watch perform and you can revisit me critiquing them. What a great learning tool. So you get all that information over and over again. You get to keep it in your video library at no additional cost. So yeah. that's very that's very convenient. Mm -hmm. what, what about uh, any disadvantages, do you think, to the online experience? I find very little disadvantage. The ones are just common sense things like uh, there are people who take the class half asleep <laughs> because you know, they're at home. They roll out of bed and get in front of the camera. So, I mean, you do have to prepare for the class like you would for any class psychologically and physically and emotionally. You can't just like have a hot dog and a beer and show, you know, and turn on the on, on the cell phone. <laughs> so sometimes people are a little bit too relaxed. That's the only disadvantage. And uh, well, the other issue that comes up is the background. And uh, I think both of us right now have reasonably uh, nice backgrounds that doesn't distract from the performance. You can also use a virtual background uh -huh. that that's provided by Zoom. You can put anything you want behind you if your apartment's a mess and you don't want to show what's back there. You can use a virtual background. They do that on on the news. I see some of the news reporters have who are broadcasting from home use virtual backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Not so, mm -hmm. You mentioned to me uh, before we went, before we started the interview that you have uh, some students though, that it, want to come in at least some of the time to the studio. Now, if your uh, studio is in New York and the student is in Illinois, that's probably not going to happen, but right. for, for your local students, you still have some folks that prefer the studio. Why do, right. you, think, why do you think they prefer the studio? Uh, well, you know, I can understand it. I'm an old school kind of person. I like to do things the old fashioned way. When I write screenplays, I use a pen and a piece of paper and I write in script and then I type it up afterwards into a program. So I'm very old school. But so, uh, yeah, I understand people wanting to go somewhere, a studio and get with a big camera in front of them. But I honestly, I think a lot of the guys just want to meet pretty girls. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit easier in person than on Zoom. Yeah. So they just want to meet pretty girls. And yeah, but uh, and they want that live interaction, which I can understand. And one thing that actually does work better in a live class is teaching movement, movement for camera. So if I want to shoot your whole body moving in a scene, like you have, a, like you're you're chasing somebody with a gun. You're a cop, and you have to track down this criminal in the warehouse. I do this exercise in my live class. Can't really do that on Zoom because it's when I'm teaching movement. It's like a dance class, movement for camera, and that you really have to be do live. Oh, one more thing in terms of scene work. Let's say you have to do a scene with another person. Uh, well, the Zoom is very friendly towards that because I just put the camera on voice activation so when one person says they're aligned they're on camera and when the other person talks the camera switches automatically over to them and so it creates the scene by itself you don't have to uh, you know it's very friendly to scene work yeah so dialoguing uh works uh in this yeah. environment as well yeah yeah right right talk to me about your star in a movie class this is uh been very popular i think oh yeah oh yeah um so, um, you know, initially I offered what most schools offer what we, what's called a scene study class where you get to actually do a scene with another person from a movie and sometimes they record it. So I just took that to the next level and said, well, instead of just doing a scene, let's make a movie and you can be, I'll write a part for you in the movie. So I am a writer, a screenwriter. And, um, and I have, uh, so I just write, I customize a screenplay, not, not a full length screenplay, but a short film for the people in my class. So let's say I have eight people who sign up for my star in a movie class. I, what I do is I meet with these eight people several times and I do improvisations and we talk and I get to know everybody really well and have them kind of do things with each other. 
And then I just wake up one morning and boing, the light bulb goes off. And I say, I got a script for you guys. And it takes me a few weeks. And I put together a screenplay for the, those eight people specifically. And uh, then we do shoot it live. I have a, a great camera person and editor. So when, but we rehearse on Zoom. We rehearse our lines on Zoom. We rehearse the characters. Everything is rehearsed on Zoom. And then we just need to go on location and shoot the film. And, you know, during the pandemic, this is a great thing because we don't have to, you know, be in a studio or travel in, in, a, in a live situation. I also have people from all around the country who have been doing this. And so they rehearse their movie part on Zoom. And then the day we're going to shoot it, they fly into New York just to shoot the film. Wow. Wow. And that's been, that's been working great. Yeah. Yeah, with the the uh, uh, the flying, the rates right now for flying from most places to New York are pretty low. Yeah, Busted. yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, and the rehearsal process is easy on Zoom. You can rehearse all you want, because you're not, you know, you don't have to re you don't have to all convene somewhere at the same time, and you know, uh, rent a studio to rehearse. It, it, it makes the whole process, the preparation part easier easier now do and so with independent films you know i don't they're not huge budget films they're modestly budgeted but the scripts are great and the acting is great that's the most important thing so if you have a great script and great acting you don't need a huge budget and i write this i write the screenplays to take place in very you know modest locations you know i'm not i don't have helicopters and car crashes and you know deep sea diving in my movie in my little short movies <laughs> so uh everything is tailored to be a kind of a smaller budget but poignant story and great characters and you know and it's and the whole point is to highlight each person in the class and give them a chance to have a movie that they've done that they could show on their acting reel or present to an agent etc it goes all my films now go up on IMDb and then you can put it on your resume as a credit. And I tell my students, don't say you took a star in a movie class with me. Just say you did the movie, you know, uh, talk the movie name, talk to me. You put that on your resume, directed by Mark Stolzenberg, produced by my production company, Circle of Life Films. Don't say it's a class and you have a film credit that way. Yeah. So it's, it's great. Now, do you uh, ever take any of those shorts and uh, and uh, enter them in competition? Yeah. So, oh, yes, a lot. Um, and I've had lots of awards I've won with these films and film festivals. Uh, best director, best best uh, best uh, story, best screenplay, best film um, at the New York International Film Festival. I won best comedy. Um, so yeah, I put them in film festivals. And also now uh, we have developed, my production company has developed a streaming channel called the Circle of Life Films. And we have, we're starting to put my, these little short films in my streaming channel and people can then, uh, you know, rent them for a very modest amount and uh, like a kind of mini Netflix kind of thing that I do with all my films. So speaking of Netflix, uh, the world uh, actors today and, and others uh, are very interested in social media and how they can make a buck or at least get their uh, face in front of folks, uh, develop a following, uh, get a fan base uh, using social media. Have you incorporated any uh, uh, instruction for influencers or for people that are doing uh, Instagram or, or uh, TikTok? <laughs> uh, I, well, to be uh, to be quite honest, I'm not a big fan of social media personally. Like, I don't really do Instagram and Facebook uh, very much. I understand its relevance and how people go uh, love it, but it's not my thing. But I do. Uh, I have a lot of people who've come to me and said, "Oh, could you coach me? Because I want to. I want to." bump up my Instagram presence and kind of do things and look more professional. And there are, you know, some people actually do get discovered on Instagram uh, for commercials and small film parts by casting directors who are now looking 
at Instagram to find actors. Um, so I've had a, a lot of people come to me and say, could, I want to I want to study with you so I could, inc you know, increase my Instagram presence and, you know, give a better give a better uh, portrait of myself, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's happening a lot. I do that. Yeah. And YouTube, of course. So YouTube, of course, is the is the daddy of them all in terms of people being able to make a lot of money uh, with right. a, with a YouTube channel. Uh, usually, they're uh, you know explaining something or they're right. Or, but so, do people come to you for that as well? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Some people have instructional videos that they're marketing. And, you know, they've never really done any work in front of a camera before, or they have, but on a very amateur level. So they come to me and they say, well, let's make this look as good as it can be. If you're gonna, if you're gonna teach people how to, you know, color their hair on YouTube, do it right. Like a real, you know, instructional video that makes you look fabulous. You know, there are little things you can do to improve your presence on all the social media uh, thing, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, you have to know how to work the camera. It's all film, film yeah. acting. Yeah. Yeah. So in general, what is the climate for acting as a profession? Um, how has, has COVID affected it? Um, uh -oh. Are there, is there a lot of work? Mm-hmm. Um, well, it was dead for a while, of course, in the beginning of the pandemic, but it, things have really picked up again. And um, m most of the major television shows are going full throttle and a lot of independent production as well. Just very strict COVID protocol about wearing masks and being vaccinated, all that stuff. But there's still, the industry has not stopped. It's even, uh, I think, growing. And uh, I think as, uh, the pandemic uh, eases and we get, you know, a little bit more open and free. It's just going to sprout like crazy. It's going to blow up because there are so many projects that have been developed that haven't been done because of the pandemic. So there's like, I personally have a waiting list of like seven films that I'm sort of waiting to shoot until it's a little bit safer, you know? So and I think that's true in the industry. There's a backlog of projects just waiting to explode out there when it's safer. Yeah. And you have Disney and Netflix oh. and Apple and Prime and all these guys that have to create massive amounts of content. It would, right. It would seem like it would be the, I don't know, the springtime for actors. And Well, yeah. Know. And uh, the demand for uh streaming movies is has increased uh, i don't i don't know the exact number but it's been a tremendous increase in demand i mean everybody's like hunkered in watching netflix and amazon prime and other movies on their cell phone or ipad whatever they're you know because people aren't going out to movie theaters so all of these streaming uh, channels have uh, all these new tv series there's like tons of new television series on on all the streaming channels it's work for everybody all the actors yeah so what would you say would set you apart make what, what's what's your difference you've been teaching uh, acting now for a very long time we won't say how long uh, <laughs> right right <laughs> you've been teaching for a very long time what do you think the specialness what's special about you what's special about your uh, technique your 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 methods? Mm -hmm. Well, a couple things. Uh, well, the first is I have a, a very eclectic background. I, I've done just about everything you can imagine in show business, from riding an elephant in the circus, to starring in a movie, to writing screenplays, to doing stand-up comedy, to doing... I mean, my perspective is, uh, is very broad, and, I, and it brings a lot of wisdom to the table and reference. So I have that and I am, well, I took a lot of classes when I was younger. I have a, a Bachelor of Arts degree in speech and theater with honors from Brooklyn College. And uh, I've also just done a lot of work. But the man, and I'm well read, I, I, I'm very well versed in various tech, Meisner, Shakespeare, 
method acting, all kinds of things I'm, I, I've done and that's studied. Uh, but that's not the most important thing I do. And I always tell this to my students that I do not teach out of a book. I do not teach out of a book. I teach from my head and my heart. And I think that the main thing I, I have to offer as an acting coach and teacher is that I have an uncanny ability to see the essence of what somebody is doing and get into their head. And then I'm able to help them. So it, I have some sort of really um, super ability to connect with what's going on in somebody's personality and head and emotional life. It's almost a spiritual thing. <laughs> it's, a, it must, yeah. it's a superpower. <laughs> yeah, it's like a superpower. It really feels that way. I mean, people tell me that all the time. And, I, and it's like I could tell what someone's thinking or, or what they're going to say before they say it. So, you know, as an acting teacher, that's invaluable stuff which also gives me, uh, makes me really good at figuring out how to help somebody. So let's say, you know, you come to me for acting classes and I, I don't just give you the standard, well, this is what you're supposed to do and study this and read this chapter in the book. I don't do any of that. I look at you and I watch your performance and in a very spontaneous kind of way, I say, you know what? I have a great monologue for you. It's going to help you to bump your performance up to the next level because you need to just kind of open up your smile a little bit. You look a little bit too serious, you know, and I, and then I'll, so I'll zone in on some aspect of the performer and figure out what they have to do to grow and to get to the next level. And I just have an uncanny ability to, to zero in on that. That's my gift. That well, really is. Well, kind yeah. of in kind of in that same vein, um, how much of what you do is psychological? Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's a famous idea or concept rolling around right now that almost all actors are performing introverts, um, and uh, they love to perform in front of the crowd, and then they, you know, they're exhausted by any kind of uh, personal involvement. So, mm -hmm. so uh, I mean, are you? Uh, do you have to play therapist? Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, because, I mean, most untrained actors are, I mean, you see everything out there from psychopaths to shy people to uh, people with accents to people who are just insecure or people who think they're movie stars and really have no idea what they're doing. I mean, you see everything. <laughs> So uh, part of what I have to do is kind of figure out, well, where's this person coming from? What are they bringing to the table and how can I help them? You know, and yeah, I have to analyze people sometimes. And when I give the direction, it, it's a little bit like analysis. What's it called uh, when you're in therapy and the therapist knows just when to confront you with something. And if they do it too soon in your therapy, it's going to like mess you up. <laughs> but if they wait for just the right timing to confront you with some aspect of your personality, they know that that's the right timing that you'll be able to digest it, and use it to grow. And I'm able to do that with actors. Sometimes I could tell some actors, I have to say, do not stop in the middle of your performance and, and say, oh, I'm sorry, can I start again? Because I have some, I could tell when a student does that because whatever psychological reason you're afraid to do the whole thing completely or afraid of failure or afraid of this. I read into that and I can tell sometimes you just have to force people to do certain things. Other times you have to step back and just let them do whatever they do. They need the, you know, they need the space to be creative. Some people need that. Everybody has a different button to push. And my job is to find out what buttons to push on each student to get them to go where they need to go. So, Mark, um, on a practical level, if a student is interested in taking uh, your classes or getting private coaching, um, what is the process? Well, I tell everyone to start out with my basic essentials course for beginners, even advanced students, I advise to take it because I have a very uh, specific slant on things that no one else teaches. And I have specific exercises that I use to bump up people's performances 
So even if you're an advanced actor, I suggest you take my beginner's course first as a preparation. And then I have advanced classes. And then uh, we do movies and other electives like improv, improv, improv class, commercials class. But I just, I just recommend that everybody starts out uh, with the basics. I, I, I've read that Lawrence Olivier, um, is he still alive? I forget. <laughs> I think he might. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember. But one of the greatest actors who ever lived, Lawrence Olivier, uh, I, I have read that he goes back and takes a periodically a, a baby beginning acting class just so he can reboot his system, refresh and start all over again. And he that's what one of the ways he stays a great actor. That, 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 that just reminds me, of course, of John Wooden, who famously, when he was the UCLA top mm. a basketball coach, I mean, won 10 NCAA championships, but he would have the pick of all mm. of the new basketball players in the country, the high schoolers that were graduating, he'd have the pick. Mm -hmm. so first day, he'd have these, whatever there is, 20 or something on a team, he'd have these 20 guys in a room Right. He'd basically say, this is a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> right. And he would start with the very basics and right. teach them all from the basics so that they would That's be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Foundationally and fundamentally trained. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. And in acting, it's even more important because people, you know, have all these personality traits and mannerisms and stuff that gets in your way when you're trying to act or at least you need to be have a self-awareness it's one thing if you have habits and manners that interfere with your ability to create a character or perform in an authentic manner but it's another thing if you're not aware of it and if you are see if you're aware of of what you're doing then you can compensate or work around it or build upon it so self-awareness is part of what I teach also. Um, there's also uh, something I used to do in mime, which is we say that you need to blank yourself out and it's applicable, applicable to acting. You need to blank yourself out and become nothing. And if you can become zero and nothing, you can create the whole universe from there. So it's like having a white screen for a move to project a movie on. If the screen is dirty and has things on it, and when you project the movie, the movie's not gonna be clear or vivid. So you wanna try to erase yourself first and then build on that. That's basic acting technique that everyone teaches, yeah. Right, so, so Mark, if somebody wants to have a conversation with you and see what they should do to get started, and this could be mm. anywhere in the world now at this point. Right. Um, how would they reach you? Call me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you want me to give you my number? <laughs> sure. On uh, Right now? So yeah. the number is 212-877-2219. 212-877-2219. And the best time uh, to reach you is? Uh, Any time during the day between 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Okay, and but you have classes starting at... Uh, yeah, usually in the weekday evenings from 6 to 10, I'm teaching. So that's not the best time. Right, New York time. So Yeah, New York City time. Call and you. I, do have, I do have students from all over the world. One day I had somebody in class from Australia, and there was somebody from Florida, and somebody from, like, the state of Washington. It's like all... And then somebody from uh, South America. Where was it? Argentina. All in the same class. Yeah. So that's <laughs> another great thing about Zoom. Yeah, that's got to be Is fascinating. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, last last uh, question. What did I leave out? What What's something that you would uh, want to say to potential students or, or even potential actors that aren't going to become your students about mm -hmm. the business that we haven't covered? This is something I tell people in my first conversation with them who want to, who are considering studying with me. What I say is your first job, the thing you have to focus on 
is to become a master of your craft, a master of your craft, not a piddler, not an amateur, not somebody who wants to be a movie star, but a master of your craft. You have to start there. People call me up uh, uh, after I take your class. Will I get an agent or will you put me in a movie? And this, that, and that. I said, so if you want to play tennis and be a tennis champion and you've never played tennis before, mm-hmm. you better go out and take some lessons and become a great tennis player first. Then you can start thinking about what competitions to enter afterwards. Don't become a movie star before you know how to act. Yeah. No, you want to. You don't want to put the cart before the horse, right? So, but first, you have to work in a disciplined manner and develop yourself. It's not like you take five acting classes and go out to Hollywood. It just doesn't work that way. And it's a very competitive industry. And so, you have to be the best you can be first before you do anything else. And uh, training and studying is part of that. If you go to an audition. The casting director, within three seconds, can tell if you've been trained properly just by little things that you do. Right away, they will evaluate. This person has not taken any classes. They don't know what they're doing. And you might be talented, but you have to know the deal. You have to know the technique. You have to know what to do. So that's very important. And and in fact, you're causing damage to yourself if you start auditioning for things when you're not ready. Because people in this business remember everything, and they have photographic memories. And then five years from now, when you go to an audition, the casting director is like, "Oh, that guy, he came from long. <laughs> he was terrible." So make sure you're ready before you get out there. Great, Mark. Well, we want to thank you for <laughs> participating in the interview today, and uh, we'll hope that there's uh, many, many, many actors across the country that will, or across the world, that. Uh, We'll mm-hmm. learn something from this video and maybe pick up the phone. Let me say one more thing that I realized I left out. Acting is fun. I actually give people a good time. People laugh. I, you know, I used to do stand-up comedy. I tell jokes. I make people laugh. It opens up the, the room and creates a, a a learning environment that's that that's easy and progressive and feels good. Some acting classes or tense and the teacher is like a frustrated actor and very strict and everybody's nervous. I, I'm very good at putting everybody at ease and just making sure everyone has a good time. And I think that's very important in the learning process.